Hey Ty, what's, what's going up, on, champ? How you doing? Good. You know, I'm I'm uh I'm so over just being in the house the whole time and working from home and all. I'm ready to go out and about. <laughs> I know, right, man? It's crazy, man. Uh, Boxing nuts. shut down, man. So we just all on ice right now. I hear you on that. Um, have a have like you been able to go outside and work out, or have you built a gym in the house? Oh uh, no, I just been doing some running in uh in a uh, calisthenics home. Okay. I just had a baby, so uh, I ain't really. Oh been. wow. Yeah, I ain't trying to go to the gym and and catch it and then bring it to my. I son. feel you. I feel you on that. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna do an intro and then we'll uh, get down with the questions. All right. So this is uh, Tyrone Bronson out of Philly, 28, eight and two with 25 knockouts. Also holds the world record with 19 <laughs> first round knockouts. So you better watch him in the streets. Now nah, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, so I'll get into like uh, the basic questions, and then and then we'll get into boxing. So, so for everyone who doesn't know, what what um part of Philly are you from? North side, baby, the best side, North Philly. I feel you on that. <laughs> I also went to Temple too. So that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. That's cool. Um, what age did you start boxing at? Nine. Nine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so why don't you tell us about your amateur background, if you can remember. Your record, or uh, how many fights did you wind up going? And what were some of your achievements in amateurs? Uh, I think my record was like eighty and twelve, or something like that. Eighty and twelve, okay. Yeah, uh, a lot of fights. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, damn. Uh, Golden Glove, like uh, states. Uh, I went to the nationals a bunch of times. Okay. Uh, a bunch of show fights. Uh, no, I never really go. I I never really got gold in the uh, in the nationals. I always got like a silver or gotcha. Or, or, okay. Or, yeah, but my amateur career wasn't that big, but but it was big. Yeah, no, it's all good. I mean, at at like the end of the day, it's all about the experience anyway. So you yeah, went yeah, up yeah. with like ninety ninety two fights before you went pro. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I also like to ask this to the fighters too. Um. So it didn't have to be your last fight in amateurs, but which which certain part of your amateur career did you know that Tyrone Brunson was ready to go pro? Uh, I think after I fought uh, Harry Yorgi. Okay. Uh, uh, what year was that? It was like oh four. Oh four. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I had lost in the Golden Gloves, I think, to uh, mm. to uh, William Boggs. And then I said, man, f man forget that. I'm, I'm a turn pro. It was in 04, though. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I also like to ask this, too, uh, because I like to show that boxers are human. So uh, so your pro debut fight was April 22nd, 2005, against Kevin Carey at the famous Blue Horizon. So I don't, I don't mean to make you sound old, but I was in eighth. Eighth grade <laughs> when you made your <laughs> when you made your pro debut. Um, yeah. so what were your nerves like? Like, were you nervous at all, or was it everyday business because of your amateur background? Uh, I was nervous because like the the uh, gloves were smaller and you had uh, no hair gear on, so I was like, you know what I mean, yeah, is it is uh different? But I mean, me me being from Philly and being who I am, I just was like, it is what it is. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um. Did you wind up having a lot of family, of course, with it being at the Blue Horizon there? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think I bought half of half of half of North Philly out. Love it, love it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so I wanted to get into your world record, uh, which is really. I had a, a call. Um, so, uh, you so your first nineteen wins were all first round knockouts. Um, yeah. So. Did you just go in with that killer instinct or like towards like maybe when you started getting on a roll where you were like 10 and 0 um <clears throat> were you were you like pressured or felt forced to to take them down in the first round or did you just go in there with that killer instinct To be honest like I see like probably the first 6 7 fights it mm -hmm. was really happening then my promoter <laughs> at the time was like oh we can go for this record so I'm like, bet. So so he started lining the right fighters up that, that he knew, and I knew that I could knock out, like, in the first round. Gotcha. That's what it was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I watched the world record one because I was, like, because I usually, like, do, like, some film study. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, 
So I saw you fight once. It was against Perez and yeah. 2015 on the Mansoor and Joey Joey Duaco card. Excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> some stuck in my throat. Um, no, I think that was a Steve Cunningham card. Was it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was uh, the Cunningham and and the Vicinia card. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um. So like, it's really cool to hear um the mentality and all just going to the 19 and 0 and stuff. And plus, it was a hell of a ride too because I'm sure you're getting a ton of media exposure too, and everyone's yeah. watching you. That was the best time in my career. Like That's just awesome. I mean, just getting all the love and, and I got I got criticized too, but I don't really care about all that. It yeah, was, yeah, no, no, it's not about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's also I mean like that that is like a record where I don't feel anybody could touch it. I mean, yeah, there's there's a kid out in the Bronx named Edgar Edgar Berlanga who we'll get just, into later, but I don't I don't know if he'll touch that, man. I just learned about him t two days ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, I saw him fight at Temple. Uh, he he looked like he fought a kid that they asked like that was like leaving like English class or something to get in the <laughs> ring with him. Like, yeah, it was yeah. crazy. I, he he would top rank or something. Yes, yeah. So so he's like their pride and joy at the moment in the middleweight division. So I actually wanted to save this later because um I would love. Uh, maybe for you to get in there with him, like after he's done with the pressure with like the record and all, or even maybe if he's going for the record, like right. I feel like that would be a hell of a fight. I'm sure Marshall would would uh, be all in on that. Like like that would be really good. Hey man, all uh, Bob got to do is call Marshall and we can make it That's happen. That's it. Bring it. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Um, all right. See. So my so my next one. Um, I always ask this too because there's a lot of ups and downs, um, and I want to show like the side of the athlete. So we won't get into the outcome, but uh, you were 21 0 and one heading into uh, your fight against Carson Jones out out in Cali, and that was your first loss. Um, yep. So I just I just like to hear about the emotions of the fighter. So did you take time off, or did you just get right back in the gym and just well, and just after, uh, brush off your shoulders after Carson fight? Yes. Uh, I think after that fight, I think I took time off. Like I was, okay. really, I, I was really hurt. You know what I'm saying, and, and uh, I had uh, took Carson lightly. I ain't really, I ain't really uh, do my homework on him or nothing. I just think I like, like me, me having auto knockouts and stuff. I'm like, man, I'm going, I'm gonna go here and blow him out the water, and that's gonna be that. That's yeah. it. But, but then me not knowing that Carson was a vet and he been in there with everybody, and you know what I'm saying, but. Overall, it was a good learning experience. For me. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, like it always, it always happens. I mean, like a lot of fighters, like you know, their egos kind of go up, but then yeah, like yeah. they kind of need that kick in the ass in that, order to that humble me. Yeah, and me. in order to be humble and stuff, you know. Yeah, so I mean, you you learn from it, and you and you uh, kept kept grinding and all. So that's what I love. Yes, um. Yeah. So, so my next question. So, like, just like even looking at your your uh, fighters and stuff on like mm -hmm. box rack, it's it's a hell of a resume. So, I mean, oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, anyone that doesn't want to fight you is crazy. I, I mean, like, yeah, they probably don't want the uh, power smoke, but it's like right. a hell of a fight, though. So, so like, right. even like you fought like Tony Harrison, Dennis Hogan, and then yeah. uh, PBC's top top. Uh, Prospect Caleb. champ, uh, Caleb Prant. Um, so gave, gave him the best fight to to this date, <laughs> right? Up to today, yeah. the best fight. Exactly. Um, so even though like they were like like even a guy like Caleb was like young in his career, mm -hmm. but like did you take a lot out of that fight? Just like like even though he was like a young kid, but like did you pick up on some stuff that he was doing? Uh, uh, to me, if, if y'all watched it, if you watched it, you could tell I had exposed all his flaws and everything. Mm -hmm. See, I was in Puerto Rico training for like two months, and uh, nobody would fight Caleb. They, nobody would fight him. So uh, I think uh, Al called me, and uh, he was like, "What's up?" And and I'm not a super middleweight, so I was like, "Man, shit, I, I'm already out here training. So why? So why not fight him?" And right. I went right out there, moved up the weight, and and did my thing. That's awesome. Yeah, that was an awesome fight. I mean, yeah. it literally went down to the wire too. Yeah. So it was, yeah. it was it was a hell of a fight. And, um, and, and 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 I'm the type of fighter I would go in your backyard. I ain't I ain't worrying about the judges. I'm not worrying about nothing. We gonna do what we do. Perfect, love it. 
Um, so I know you're still going and stuff. Um, so I just like to ask this question too. Um, so what was your favorite win so far? Would you say out of the uh, 28 wins? I bet you already know which one it was. You you know which one it was. I think it was uh, the uh, the one that broke the record. Oh man! Now, Kermit Centron. Ah oh, yeah 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my biggest win, man. That was that was yeah. huge. That was huge. Yes, two time world champion. Mm hmm. That was that was an awesome one. Yeah, I yeah I was like leaning towards that, but I was like, okay, maybe maybe he might go for the record. But no. nah, that one that one was was yeah. was awesome. That was a hell of a fight. Five knockdowns and five rounds. <laughs> that that was that fight could have been on TV. Yeah, that fight could have been on TV. Yep. Yep. I remember that too. Um, so I, I want to get into. So for those that don't know, you're actually on the TV show The Contender. Um, sure. So what was what was that like? Because like, were you like living with everybody in like a, a house or like a complex that they had? Yeah, we we was living like in a house. Uh, okay. A house like in some secret location. Right. <laughs> But it was a uh, it was a great experience. I got to be around uh, a lot of good fighters, mm -hmm. uh, good, a, a lot of good people. Uh, Andre Ward, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, just just a uh, uh, just a bunch of good people. And uh, we and we was all friends in 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 a brotherhood. But but at, at the end of the day, we knew we all had to fight each other. So right, exactly. It was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because like. That like must have been like a cool experience because like yeah I mean like you got the network and stuff and also yeah. being on this show got your name out there even more even if people didn't even know about you already but like yeah. it must it must have been crazy living in there where like where like you're like eating lunch lunch or dinner with them and then and then you'll wind up in the ring with them it's just, yeah. this is crazy yeah. yeah it was crazy uh it was crazy because the blue team gold team. And uh, like you said, we was eating breakfast together, running together, training together, yeah. talking together. But then at nighttime, we gotta fight each other. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the craziest thing. Yeah. It's nuts. Um, so obviously with uh the pandemic going on, um, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that we see, you know, um, you guys back in the ring, like hopefully July, August, or even in the fall. Um, so. So how active are you trying to be? So like we don't have to go into twenty twenty, but like for twenty twenty one, are you like trying to do like four to six fights? You trying to do three fights in the year? Like what are you uh trying to get? Uh, right now, like 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 I said, I've been boxing since boxing since I was nine years old. I'm thirty five right now. Yes. So uh, I I got, I had a lot of longevity in this game, and uh, my goal is to uh, come back and fight as much as I can, at least four or five times because I took a loss in my last fight. <clears throat> so uh, I want to uh, get a good fight because I don't want no mm -hmm. easy fight. I want a good fight yeah. to get back my rating so I can get back rated in the in the top uh, 10 for the IBF, WBC, or whatever. And then uh, after that, I'm trying to get a title shot and then, and then defend a couple times, and then I'm walking away. Yeah. All right. Dope. Yeah, because, like, <clears throat> I mean, even though we – um touch on it earlier in the interview but i would really love that edgar that edgar berlanga fight so he fights out of the um so so he's a from from the bronx um he pretty much likes to fight in like the new york area they usually fight yeah. him at like the hulu yeah. theater um or he fought at temple when he was on he it was supposed to be the carl frampton fight but jason sosa wound yeah. up being I the main event card. right i remember that card yeah, so well, have people call my people and we can get it on. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I know because he is a middleweight, so obviously you would be able to make the uh, weight anyway. So yeah, I mean, but see, I'm I'm a natural junior middleweight. I fight junior middleweight. But yeah, if the but if it's right, the money right, everything right, we I got no problem. Yeah, from, uh, coming up this uh, sixty. Oh yeah, and then I even I even guarantee you, after he fights you, he could fight whoever the next the next five years. He he will say that. Tyrone Brunson was his hardest fight he's ever fought. Definitely. Yes, because I'm gonna come. I'm coming to Rumble, and I'm coming to give him an L. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I, I don't it. play with these dudes, man. I don't yeah. play with these dudes. I'm, I'm coming to give him an L. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so hopefully they're able to work it out. Maybe uh, Marshall sees this. <laughs> Maybe he makes the call. That would be really cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
that's a fight that I would love to see. Whether it's in Philly or even in New York. Like, who cares? Let's let's yeah. get it on. I got no problem traveling. <laughs> I know, right? No problem traveling. Yeah. Um, so why don't we touch base with your relationship with Marshall and how and how has that been, uh, for him being your uh promoter and all? My relationship with Marshall, it been it been great. It been great. Uh I respect him. I I like him more I like him as a person. Uh because I think in 2015 and 16, when my doors was 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 like kind of closing on me, and like everybody like damn, like I don't want to mess with him. I want to deal with him. This that this that. Or they wanted to, or they wanted me me to, me to come in as an opponent, and I wasn't feeling that. So uh, I got so Marshall reached out, or I reached out to Marshall, took a chance on me, and uh, the rest is the rest is history. I never lost on a King's promotion card. I mean, everybody everybody he put in front of me, even me. Even me knowing I knowing I supposed to lose, I went in there and, and knocked him out, beat him, or and did what I supposed to done. And now uh, I'm here, right here, where I'm at, and and uh, Marshall is giving me the best fight, making the making the best money and the most money. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. No, it's like cool that you found your uh, guy yeah, that yeah. you uh, trust and all. Because I know I know like the boxing <clears throat> game can be like tricky a little bit, but yeah. now you found your guy that's that actually. You you trust and you know that puts you in the right places too. So that's even perfect. Even though I know when I had first signed with him, he was throwing me in trying to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but I passed every test and the rest is history. That's awesome. Cool. Um. So I just like to ask this one too. Um. So I like I like to give everybody like a feedback on like the grind and stuff, trying to make weight and stuff. Um, so is there like a lot of stuff that you cut out of your diet? So like, what are like some of the foods that you got to cut out in like your uh, training and stuff in order to get your body right for, for like a fight? Uh, like for, like for me making weight, I like to cut out like all the sweets. I cut out the bread. Uh, I, I like to eat a lot of baked, baked food, fish, uh, pro, uh, protein fish. Uh, I take my supplements and, uh, I just work hard and run. Like I never had a, I, I've been making 154 since. Uh, 2000, 9, 1998, something like that. Because, because in amateurs, I I always fought 47, 52. So I just stayed 54 from uh 2005 on up. Oh, okay. But, yes. Uh, uh, so but, that's like easy for you then. Yeah. But 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 the key to uh, making weight is them long runs. Is is long runs in the uh, hard work. Okay. Cool. Um. So <laughs> I have two more questions for you, and I'm gonna let you no go. Problem. So he's. So these are some fun ones. Um, so you, so if you could have dinner with three boxers, they could be dead or alive. Who would they be, and what restaurant are you are you taking them to? Uh, three boxers. One one of them gotta be Meldrick Teller. Okay. Uh, Meldrick, I like Trinidad. Trinidad, yeah. And uh, hmm. Got, it got to be Floyd. Floyd? We're going to Roof Chris. Everything on me. <laughs> okay. I love it. Uh, I actually haven't eaten there yet, but I'm, I'm hoping that once everything chills, I'm hoping to go uh, check it out and all. Yeah. yeah it's a, a great restaurant. It's just high as hell. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. High as hell. But uh, actually, I'm uh, great friends with uh, Tommy Hearns. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's my man. That's my man. Him and his whole family. Okay. Yeah, I also have to give a shout to our uh, friend of the show too. It is Jerome Conquest. When I uh, posted yesterday on my on my Insta story, he was a uh, really hyped that I uh, got you and all too. Yeah, so. yeah, that's my man. That's my man. Yeah, Rome's Rome's a great guy. He's he's just that fighter that will fight anybody and and he will do anything for his community and all. So he is yeah. just a great guy. He, he definitely is a great guy. Like he he one of the, the guys that I really have a relationship with like I don't really deal with these new school guys because I don't right, really know, yeah I don't really know these guys you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. I, I mean but uh Rome is a real one solid dude for sure uh so my last question I've been uh I've been doing a poll um so what is your favorite cheesesteak spot in Philly uh uh I like for fro to be honest I go to the poppy store and they make the best poppy but, store uh, but uh but uh if I had to pick a big one, it'd be Max's. Max's, okay. Yeah. 
I actually had it once when I was at Temple. It was like one of the late nights out. Uh, and that, that, was, right down the street? that was yeah, that was a really good snake. Is it, that was really it's like good. A, what? It's like a foot long joint. Like yeah, yeah, long. it's crazy. <laughs> and like, and like the meat's not even chopped. It's like it's like thrown on there. It's so good. John thrown on there, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, so so I've been the lone wolf. I had chose Tony Luke's, and uh, nobody's a uh, nobody's even bothered to join me. So <laughs> to me, to to me, I just think them uh, cheesesteak spots is just for like tourists. tourists yeah, yeah, like, exactly. But the real spots is in the hood. Like you, got, like, I, I rather eat a poppy store cheesesteak. Yeah, I had um, I had um, Ty Ty Williams on here, and he. And he told me about the place that is near Kensington and Lehigh, I think it is. It's called One One Pound Steaks. Right. He said that that one's really good. It's like right off of the L if you come off the Huntington Park Station. That that one. It's like right, right underneath the L, that one. Right, right, right. I got you. i never yeah. been before, but, I mean, it probably is. It probably yeah, is. It probably, probably is. Good. But like I said, I'll go to the corner store and just grab me a little poppy joint. That thing be banging, too. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. Well, Ty, thank you so much for your time. It was a lot of fun. I hope, I hope, I hope that all the followers enjoyed it too. And we Appreciate cannot you. wait to see you uh, do some damage in the ring, and hopefully it's against Edgar, maybe. So thank you, we'll thank you, man. Yeah. Tell his people, call my people. Let's make it happen, baby. Let's let's do it. <laughs> all right, Ty. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, man. you. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Have a good one. You too.